Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Grzegorz, and I'm machine learning engineer at RoboFlow. And today I'm going to take you on the journey uh, on, of measuring real world with uh, your cameras. Um, on this slide, you see an example uh, that we encountered with one of our customers. They've had real problem with um, their assembly line being uh, stuck with uh, objects that were wrongly measured, and that was costing them um, real money. In the end of the day, we solved the problem by applying our workflow and some of the techniques I'm going to uh, present to you today. Uh, for the purpose of this presentation, I'm going to uh, measure Lego bricks, uh, mainly because they're freely available, especially if you have uh, little kids at home. Um, so my first task was to create a, an object detection model. Uh, I annotated roughly about 80 uh, photos. And uh, then I made use of uh, augmentations. Uh, you can create a data set using RoboFlow platform to and augment your original data set. And as a, as a result, I ended up having a data set of about 2000 images. And then I've built uh, my workflow. Uh, this is very simple workflow where I have object detection model and size measurement block. Um, the size measurement block uh, accepts two inputs. That's why we need to filter out uh, our reference object and uh, measured object. Uh, in my particular example, uh, I use a wooden ruler as a reference object. That ruler um, is filtered out with this block, and then there are Lego bricks um, that are that are filtered out, filtered out uh, with another filter block. Uh, and also for the purpose of uh, this video, I use uh, my test object. Um, I've measured it. It's about nine and a half centimeters uh, length. So let's test uh, our workflow. This is the workflow that I've shown you uh, just a minute ago. Uh, I also added extra bounding box visualization just so we actually see what the model is producing. Um, and uh, as we can see, the, the measurement that came out uh, is quite far away from our expected 9.6 centimeters. It's only about eight, eight centimeters. Um, so what is it, what is it that uh, went wrong here? Uh, so I realized that sticking 20 centimeters as a reference object length was uh, not a very good idea because the reference object itself uh, is only it is uh, 21 centimeters. Uh, the reason I made this uh, rookie mistake is because we've all, we've seen some of our users actually doing that. Uh, they just assumed that the length of the reference object is exactly uh, the length of their scale. So uh, let's update our workflow uh, to reflect this fact. It's as easy as just inserting the right value uh, here in this window. And then we can test our workflow. As a result, we see that we are still one centimeter off. And actually, if we try to rearrange our object um, and play with, uh, with this workflow, we can see that the resulting uh, size will greatly differ depending on where the object is related to our reference object. And what we, what we observe here is the effect of uh, perspective. And there is also one other uh, effect. If we place our object at angle, uh, we will also distort the resulting 
measurement. This is mainly because we've used the object detection model. So, here are some, uh, some tests in our presentation. And in order to fix the problem, we will introduce a block uh, for perspective correction. Mm. To do this, we need to train another model. Uh, instead of object detection, we'll use instance segmentation. Nice thing about RoboFlow platform is that we can just reuse our data set. Uh, and uh, for the purpose of uh, uh, this new model, I also introduced some more objects. Uh, in this particular case, I added a white sheet of paper. This will um, serve the purpose to remove the perspective uh, at later stage. Uh, I updated my workflow, and the only difference is I introduced those three blocks here. Um, we need to filter our detections to, uh, to get the white piece of paper and then extract the dynamic zone. This is simplifying the segmentation to only contain four points. Uh, and that polygon is then used as an input to our perspective correction block. So let's uh, test our workflow. And uh, the result, which is 9.68, it's almost 9.7 centimeters, is uh, much better. Um, considering the fact that our segmentation here is not very smooth, uh, I would say that we're already within uh, the measurement error uh, for, for, uh, for this particular model. Um, And the question is, can we get any better uh, than this? And the answer is that in most cases, yes, we can. Uh, most of the cameras come, uh, that, that are available on the market, they produce image that is, is distorted in some way. Um, in this photo here, we see radial distortion. So the straight line here, the red straight line, is what our ruler should, should be, really. But we can see that the camera distorted the view, so the ruler is not really straight. There are other distortions as well. Here uh, you can see the link to OpenCV uh, tutorial, where they talk about this uh, in details. Uh, so we can produce uh, the calibration coefficients and use them in our workflows uh, within the camera calibration block that I will show you in, in a minute. Um, in inference repository, we made available uh, this example script that you can use uh, uh, to produce those calibration coefficients. It, as a input parameters, it takes path to directory with, with images. Uh, the important thing here is that the chessboard that we use for calibration will have a number of inner corners, and those corners are what, uh, what should be counted uh, as input uh, to the script to, in order to calibrate uh, the camera. This is uh, one, of the, um, one of the problems that and many people on the internet seem to be falling into. So our workflow with camera calibration is very similar to the previous one with only distinction that I added this one step before feeding the image into the, into the model. Uh, those uh, coefficients are calculated uh, with the script I've just shown you. And let's see uh, if we get any better result.
So it turns out uh, the result is slightly better, although as I said, it's already within uh, it's already within mm, the measurement error. So for uh, for my model, I should really focus on training models to produce smoother mm, segmentations. Uh, what I would like to show you is this image here uh, was uh, calibrated. So distortions have been removed. We can see this this area here where um, the image was uh, altered in order to remove distortions. So that would conclude the presentation.